Welcome everyone to Cognitive Spirals, exploring the latest research into consciousness, cognition, and machine intelligence. Today, we're diving deep into something really fascinating, the idea that reinforcement learning, or RRRRA, combined with transformer architectures might just be a general purpose problem solver. Yeah, it's a pretty bold claim, isn't it? I mean, we've seen how well these models are performing in so many different areas, but general purposes is a whole other level. It is a bold claim. But is it hype, or is there something truly revolutionary going on? I'm not entirely convinced, you know. We've been through so many AI winters after similar claims. Right, I share some of that skepticism. I think the current hype around Transformers and RL is just that hype. I mean, they can do impressive things, sure, but are they really understanding the underlying problems, or are they just really good at mimicking patterns? Okay, so let's unpack that a bit. For those who might not be super familiar RL, at its core, is about agents learning through trial and error, maximizing rewards in an environment. Think of a video game player learning to optimize their moves through experience, transformers. On the other hand, are these powerful architectures that are really good at processing sequences, like text, for example. They're the backbone of all these large language models we've been hearing so much about. Exactly. And what's fascinating is that when you combine these two, you get something that seems capable of tackling a remarkably broad range of tasks, like, you're not just stuck in the text domain or the game domain. You can start moving between them. I agree there's potential. I just think we're missing a key piece. They are good at recognizing patterns and optimizing decisions within very specific parameters. But real-world problems often require more than just pattern recognition. I mean, they need, you know, an understanding of underlying principles and how things work. Exactly. I think the real-world translation is where they fall apart. You get these impressive demonstrations on very curated data sets. But then they fail miserably when faced with something slightly out of the ordinary. There isn't this inherent understanding that we humans possess. That's fair. So let's look at some examples. We've seen RL agents mastering complex games like Go or StarCraft, where they are learning incredibly sophisticated strategies from scratch using transformers as the underlying architecture. We've also seen language models using transformers generating, you know, incredibly coherent and contextually relevant text. These are things that were pretty much science fiction not too long ago. And not just games and text. Look at robotics, for example. We're seeing RL being used to train robots to perform complex manipulation tasks, like assembly or even surgery. Transformers can handle the complex sensory input from the robot's cameras, processing the environment and feeding that information to the reinforcement learning algorithm so the robot can make informed decisions. These are tasks that require very complex reasoning about space, time, and physical constraints. Yes, but those are, in a sense, narrow tasks. They're confined to well-defined environments, and the agent is trained with very specific goals in mind. What about situations where goals are not clearly defined or where the environment changes unpredictably? I mean, can these models really handle those real-world scenarios, you know, where things aren't so perfect? That's exactly my point. It's the ability to generalize beyond training data that worries me. I mean, deep learning models are just really good at fitting a very specific curve to the training data, but that doesn't mean they've acquired true knowledge or understanding of the underlying concepts. It's brute force and lots of data, right? It's a massive curve-fitting exercise. Okay, but it's more than just curve-fitting, isn't it? I mean, the fact that the same architecture, that same core of RL and Transformers, can learn to play Go, then also compose music, and then control a robot. This suggests something pretty fundamental is at play. It's not about just specific solutions for specific problems. It's about a general learning process that seems adaptable to very different domains. This is exciting to me. I totally agree. And it's not like these models are just memorizing. They can generalize to a degree. It's like, for example, a language model that has been trained on a massive text data set can generate new, coherent sentences it has never seen before. That's not just curve fitting. That's some level of understanding, you know, of the underlying structure of language. Not full understanding, but still. But again, understanding language is not the same as understanding the world. Language is, you know, a symbolic system. And these models are really good at manipulating symbols. But do they understand the concepts behind the words? Can they reason about cause and effect in the real world like we do? I don't see that capacity in these models, not yet anyway. And that's where my skepticism lies. I mean, how do you move from processing text and pixels to understanding the underlying principles and logical relationships that govern our universe? Deep learning really struggles to encode this high-level structured knowledge. I think we need something much more symbolic, more like classical AI. All right, so it's not perfect. I get it.
but the efficiency and adaptability are intriguing. I mean, the brain learns and adapts in ways that feel similar, you know? It integrates different sensory inputs, it learns from its experiences, and it makes decisions based on its goals. We're observing these parallels in the architecture of RL and transformers. I wonder if there might be some fundamental connection there? Yeah, that's a really interesting point. The brain is, after all, this amazing general purpose problem solver. If RL and transformers are showing these similar properties, maybe there are lessons there, you know? Maybe we can learn from the brain's architecture to make these AI systems even better. It could be some form of convergence on a common pathway, right? That's the hope anyway, but I suspect the brain uses a very different type of computation. There's so much structure in the brain, all these different regions and pathways dedicated to different functions. Deep learning architectures are, you know, comparatively monolithic. They're just these big complex networks of interconnected nodes. I'm not convinced we can replicate the brain's ingenuity with these brute force techniques, you know. And it's not just the lack of structure in the networks, it's also the lack of any explicit representation of time and space. You know, our brain constantly models these, and deep learning seems to handle this only implicitly, or indirectly. I think we need to understand how the brain integrates these different representations to achieve true understanding. Okay, so let's dig into that then. How are the brain and these architectures similar and different? What are the advantages and limitations of the current approach? And what are some potential avenues for future research? I mean, it seems we all agree this isn't a perfect solution. So where do we go from here? Well, from my perspective, I think we're still scratching the surface with deep learning. I believe more data, bigger models, and more sophisticated training techniques will get us closer to AGI. I mean, just look at how far we've come in the last few years. The potential is there. I feel like the exponential growth is very clear and the curve points in the direction of AGI. We're just following the best trajectory. I'm not so sure. I think we need a fundamental shift in how we approach AI. We need systems that can reason with structured knowledge, that can understand causal relationships, and that can generalize to new, unseen situations. I think the neurosymbolic approach is the way to go. You know, combining the best aspects of neural networks and symbolic AI. I agree with that. We need something that is able to integrate and translate between different coordinate systems. I suspect the key is understanding spatiotemporal representations and how to translate between them, how the brain represents 3D space and abstract symbolic spaces, and how to translate between these. The current deep learning approaches feel so brute force. Okay, those are some really interesting viewpoints. So, let's unpack each one a little more. Starting with you, what are the next steps? I mean, what research would you propose in light of your belief in the power of deep learning? Right, so, I think we need to keep pushing the boundaries of deep learning. I'm really interested in scaling these models even further, experimenting with different architectures, and exploring new training techniques. For example, what is the optimal dataset composition for reaching AGI? I think there are a lot of untapped potentials in identifying the bottlenecks that prevent these models from achieving true general intelligence. We also need to develop more robust metrics to truly capture the nuances of emergent intelligence. And I think we need to move in a different direction, away from purely data-driven approaches. I am keen to explore more advanced neurosymbolic architectures, perhaps like those based on logic programming or hybrid systems. The focus should be on building transparent and modifiable systems that can reason with structured knowledge. We also need to investigate how to incorporate these symbolic elements within RL and transformers. I'm convinced that's where the true power lies. We need to get away from the black box nature of deep learning. I agree. And I think my next step would be to investigate the mathematical and computational foundations of representing spatiotemporal data. I'd like to see if we can define core algorithms that can easily translate between different coordinate systems, allowing AI to seamlessly move between symbolic representations, spatial representations, and neural network representations. I'm convinced the answer lies there, and that will need an approach that is far from the brute force, data-centric approach. Okay, so I'm interested in how RL and transformers can be improved to better mimic biological neural processes. I think exploring neuromorphic hardware to accelerate the development of these hybrid neuro AI systems is key. I want to focus on the importance of representing knowledge, not just data. A true understanding of how to best mimic the brain's processing should be the direction. We also need to investigate how RL and transformers address the critical aspect of multisensory integration and improve these architectures to better mirror this function. That's an interesting avenue. Neuromorphic hardware could indeed offer a more efficient and biologically plausible platform. It would be interesting to see how this would accelerate the learning and convergence of these models. Yeah, neuromorphic hardware could definitely be a crucial element. If we could make it work together with symbolic computation and neural networks, I think we could be in a better position. 
but I'm also thinking we need to investigate how these networks handle causal reasoning, not just correlations. We need to move beyond pattern matching. I mean, right. I feel that the translation between coordinate systems is such a fundamental aspect of intelligence that current deep learning approaches completely miss. So I think that's the biggest bottleneck in achieving AGI. I suspect the brain's ability to handle these seamlessly is why it's so powerful. And the models that I am working with have huge issues when trying to translate between these systems. Yes, and I think it's important not to get too caught up in the hype of current models. We have to dig into the underlying mechanisms of learning and decision making in the brain and try to translate these insights into the design of better. AI systems. It has to be a more organic approach, not a brute force data approach. It is amazing how far we have come, though, in the past few years. If you told someone 10 years ago about what deep learning and transformers can do today, they wouldn't believe you. The future is really bright with this approach. I can feel the AGI. I'm not convinced that more of the same will get us to AGI. I think this current path is a dead end in some aspects. I really feel like a hybrid neurosymbolic approach has to be the next step to make progress in this field. And I think we are very close to seeing a new paradigm shift. I agree there has been a lot of progress, but I do think the current focus on deep learning is a distraction. It's like we're trying to solve a fundamental problem with an overly complex and inefficient approach. Until we understand how to do this translation between coordinate systems, we will always have an issue with generalization. Well, it sounds like we have a very active and dynamic research landscape, a lot of interesting directions to explore. It's clear this is just the beginning of a long journey. It is so interesting to see the different paths being explored. It's very exciting. Definitely. And as these models evolve, it's crucial to keep in mind the ethical implications and potentially unintended consequences. It's not just about the science, but about responsible innovation. Absolutely. We need to build these systems with a strong sense of purpose and responsibility and also try to understand why these models make decisions and how they are making them. The black box nature of current models is concerning. Yeah, it's important that our research is grounded in a real world understanding of how these systems might affect society and ensure we are building models that help people. Well, on that note, I think that's a wrap on today's discussion. Thank you all for sharing your insightful perspectives. This has been a really stimulating conversation. And thank you to our listeners for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Cheers.